tonight, wherever you are, open up your heart to the Lord and ask him to release the Holy Spirit upon your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have brought us into your presence this afternoon, that we, shall, we, we are able to dine with you over this lunch hour. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for providing us with this time. Thank you, King of Glory, for that gift of life you have given to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for providing us space to be able to come in your presence and dine with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you, our Father, God Almighty, for loving us so dearly that you've not left us as, uh, as orphans. We thank you, King of Majesty. Thank you, Father God Almighty, for loving us so much that even while we are still sinners, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and purchase us from the marketplace of sin. We thank you, King of Majesty. We honor you and exalt you. We bless your holy name, our Lord and our God, for this afternoon. We thank you, King of Glory. For you are a God who never sleeps, no slumbers. You are a God who hears us each time we call unto your name. Lord, as we come into your presence, King of glory, we come to say you alone are worth of all praises. You deserve honor and glory. You are our good God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your God Almighty. We worship you. Our Lord, we honor you. We exalt you. We glorify your name. For none is like you, our master. Father God Almighty, we worship your holy name. Because we know there is no one like you in all the ends of the earth. No one can compare with you because you alone are God rich in wisdom. You alone are rich in knowledge because you are God who created the universe without consulting with anyone. Because you are from the beginning to the end the same. You are the God who was before the world began. You are King of glory who spoke a word and it came into being. And because of who you are, we give you praise. Because of who you are, we worship you. Because of who you are, we lift your name on high. Because of who you are, we have come to say you are worthy. Worthy are you, O Lord, our God. You are worthy to receive the glory. You are worthy to receive the praise. You are worthy, King of majesty, master who can compare with you. In all the ends of the earth, no one is like you. You alone are the God of the universe, the King of glory. We worship you this afternoon on this first day of the month. We come with open hearts, our master, to say thank you. Thank you for carrying us through the last four months of the month of the year. Since January through February, March was done, and you've carried us through April to this month of May. We are so grateful. We are so thankful, oh God, that you have given us the breath. We thank you that, Lord, you have provided for us. We thank you that you are leading us, King of glory, close to the halfway of the year. We thank you, my master, for the many gifts you have given to us. We thank you for the gift of life. But most importantly, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for giving us Jesus, your only begotten son that through him we have life eternal. Through him we are confident of tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus, for dying in our place. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the penalty of my sin. Thank you for dying for each one of us, our master and our God. We are so grateful that you died for us, that you loved us so much to the point of dying on the cross. Thank you, Father. Lord, you are worthy. You deserve all the praise. Lord, no one is like you. You alone are good and most worthy of all praises. You are worthy. You are holy. Holy are you, O oh Lord. We join the angels in heaven that bow down every day to say, Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. We too worship you here, King of glory, to join, joining the angels saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. 
Lord, you alone are worthy. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be glorified. We worship you, our master and our God. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed the people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Thank you, King of Majesty. Thank you, Jehovah God Almighty. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are God Almighty. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name. You alone are God and most worthy of all praises. Receive all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we worship. Beloved, even as we continue in the presence of God, worshiping his holy name, we want to recognize that we have sinned against God. The scriptures are very clear that none of us is free from sin. If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we know the God whom we are approaching, he is a holy God. In him there is no sin. He is perfect. He is righteous. He is holy. And he demands that we worship him in the truth and in his spirit. He who is holy has called us to be holy. But you know that we have not lived to the standard. And so I want to invite us, beloved, wherever you are in your living room, in your business, wherever you are seated, in your sitting room, wherever, I want to call forth even those present, that you come into the presence of God with an open heart, surrender your heart, and ask him to have master upon you. Truth is that God hates sin, and he cannot dwell where there is sin. So he wants us to confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. Our Lord and our God, Lord, we come before you in repentance. As an individual, I stand here to repent on my own behalf, my Father, and I'm asking you to remember mercy. Remember mercy upon me, O oh God. I have sinned against you. You know my thoughts. My thoughts are before you. They will be before the word is out. You already know it. You perceive my thoughts from afar. And there is nothing I can hide from you. I repent this afternoon and ask you for mercy. I ask you to forgive me, Heavenly Father. Forgive me as an individual. Lord, I repent and ask you to forgive me in every way where I have brought shame to your name, when I have complained, when I have grumbled. Lord, have mercy upon me when I have been a stumbling block and I have hindered many from entering your kingdom. I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I repent and ask you to forgive me, my master. I confess that, Lord, my sins are before you. Lord, have mercy upon me. King of glory, I also want to repent on behalf of my family. I bring repentance on behalf of my family. I recognize that I and my household, we have sinned against you, knowingly or unknowingly. Lord, I ask you to be gracious to us today and forgive us, oh God. Forgive us because you are a God who has promised that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just. You'll forgive us and purify us of all unrighteousness. Lord, will you forgive me and my household? But also, I also want to repent on behalf of the church. I ask you to forgive us as a church. Lord, you have called us to be the light in the world. And where we have not lit for the world to see your glory, Master, forgive us. Where we have not shown bright, forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us, King of Majesty, when we have not had an impact in society. That even when we stand in the world, there is no difference between us and the children of the devil. Lord, we ask you to forgive us tonight as a church you have called us to love one another. Lord, you know where we have struggled to love. You know where we have struggled, my master, to care for one another. You know where we have failed, King of glory. Lord, to stand in for those that are hurting. Lord, we ask you to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, be gracious to us this afternoon. We pray that us you for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus our father and our God we know you as a God who forgives we know you as a God who does not treat us as our sins deserve 
we know you as a God who always show us mercy. Now tonight we come as a church and pray that you'll forgive us, oh God. Lord, forgive the words we have spoken that has not built your kingdom. Forgive us, Lord, for the thoughts that we have tolerated in our hearts that have betrayed us, oh God, and our relationship with you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us this afternoon. Will you remember mercy? Remember mercy upon every believer. As a body of Christ, we ask you to forgive us where we have not united in, in spirit, O oh God, where we have failed my master to stand for one another. Lord, where we have not stood to love one another as you command us. You command us to love one another so the world may know that we are your disciples. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Lord, where we have not loved one another. Our Lord and our God, we know that you have called us to care for the poor, for the needy, for the prisoners, for the sick. Lord, will you remember us and forgive us when we have left men of your children to languish and die out there. Lord, will you remember mercy when we have not visited the sick in hospitals? Will you remember mercy when we have not visited the prisoners? Lord, remember mercy when we have not taken care of the widows and the orphans, oh God. Lord, forgive us, we pray as a church, and ask you for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we finally want to say we are sorry as a nation. Lord, where we have not exalted you, where we have not portrayed the image as Ugandans, when we say that for God and my country, and we know that we are yours, and we have behaved contrary, Lord, forgive us. Lord, we repent and ask you to forgive us when we have frustrated your children, the poor. Forgive us when we have grabbed what belongs to the needy and the poor. Forgive us, Lord, when we have acted in an injustice manner. Lord, forgive us, King of glory, when we have mistreated your people. Lord, remember mercy when we have misused our offices. We have stolen funds, oh God. Forgive us, King of glory. Lord, remember mercy. We have cheated on our bosses in our offices, oh Lord. Forgive us, oh King of glory, when we have consulted with witches, oh God. We repent and ask you for mercy when we have bowed down to idols. Lord, remember mercy and forgive us in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, it is the cry of our hearts because you tell us to return it to you. Lord, this afternoon, we are returning to you as a nation. As Ugandans, we are coming back to you saying, God, have mercy. We are coming to send, have mercy upon us, oh God. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you for your promise that you give to us that when we return it to you, Seek your face and pray and return away from our wicked ways. You promise to hear. You promise to heal us. You promise to answer us. Lord, we ask that today that you'll heal our land, Uganda. Today, you heal the church. Today, heal families, oh God, my master. On this labor day, my master, we are asking in the name of Jesus that you'll accept our labor. You'll accept us, King of glory. you accept our efforts, oh God, that, Lord, you reward our hard work in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying, King of glory, for every worker, for every every staff in every organization that Lord my master you'll accept us king of glory that you'll accept our labor force oh God that it will come to you as a sweet aroma that we shall not work to, to just to, to satisfy ourselves and families but our labor will be to you king of glory and to the nation and to the people that you have called us to serve in the name of Jesus Lord it is our prayer that, Lord, in everything that we do, will it bring honor and glory to your holy name. That there will be peace in organizations, in the world, in the country. There will be peace in different places. That, Lord, our service, our labor, will it not be out of grumbling or looking at payments as salary. But, Lord, we shall offer our labor and all our effort will be focused on you. 
because, Lord, we desire to see you glorified. Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Now, Lord, King of Majesty, as you have brought us into this new month of May, we are so grateful that, Lord, the past month we have been looking at and, and celebrating the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. But we know that as Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven, he promised the Holy Spirit. So as we look at the Holy Spirit in this month, we are asking you, Lord, King of glory, that, Lord, you let your Holy Spirit work in us. Let your Holy Spirit work in our lives. Let your Holy Spirit empower us. Yes, empower us for service in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit do all that is meant to do in this month of May. In the name of Jesus. That by the time we go through it, King of Glory, your children will be filled up with your Holy Spirit and will be empowered, King of Glory, to serve you in a different style, in a different way. Now, Lord, King of Majesty, we have come. We are hungry to hear from you. We are hungry and thirsting for you. Lord, will you speak to us? Use me as a vessel, I pray, that every little word that comes out of my mouth, Lord, will be instructed and guided and ordained by you alone. Let your word come to encourage strength, rebuke and correct us this afternoon, that we may be able to live right with you. To the honor and glory of your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. A very good afternoon, beloved, both present in house and those who are online. Thank you for finding time to join in this hour of prayer. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us together even as we continue in his presence. Yes, as you heard me pray, the last month we are looking at the, 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 the resurrection, the power of resurrection. And we learned a lot about uh, what the resurrection meant to us. And now this month, this month of May, we are focusing on the Holy Spirit. And this, this afternoon, we are looking at the Holy Spirit as an advocate. But for the sake of those that missed out on the morning... Um, morning devotion during our time of prayer, we looked at the Holy Spirit as our gift. And um, we, we focused on uh, the, the apostles, the Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verse 38, which says that, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We basically concentrated on the three areas where Peter was telling the people the only way to be saved and receive the Holy Spirit was through repentance, uh, through um, baptism. Re after repenting, baptism happens, and then the forgiveness of sins follows, and then the Holy Spirit would come. And so that was, um, those were the steps, the stages that Peter mentioned in that verse. Uh, however, one thing that I just want to uh, uh, pull out for us to know that um, forgiveness comes only when you have recognized the need for forgiveness. It comes after you recognize that you have actually sinned and you need to be forgiven. And so you come in repentance by confessing your sin and tell God, I have sinned against you. I've gone astray. I've done this. But this time I want you to forgive me. I am willing to walk in a right way. And you turn and you, 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 make, you make a, a, a U-turn, right? If you're going to, you're going a right direct, a wrong direction and you realize that you, you have gone, you gotten lost, then repentance means you, you make about turn and you walk a right direction. Now, uh, we also realize that we also shared in earlier, the, um, sharing in the early hours that the Holy Spirit was given to us as Jesus promised while Jesus was here on earth, before he, 
his death as he was preparing to face the cross and he leave his disciples in chapter 14 of, of the gospel of John. Jesus told his disciples and said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And you know, that the, you know the way to where I am going. Now, I don't want to go into much story. But one thing Jesus was bringing out to the, the disciples. These are his friends he had walked with three years. And they are going to miss him. Of course, he's going to die. And he was encouraging them. Friends, like all of us, we need encouragement. Jesus encouraged them and says, Let not, hurt your, let not your heart be troubled. And again, we see in John uh, still verse 26. But let me pick it from verse 24. Same chapter, John chapter 14. In verse 24, Jesus went ahead to say, let me pick it from verse 23. Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and will, we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you? Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let's go from here. Now, friends, these words are very encouraging, just as they were encouraging to the disciples then, because Jesus had been here on earth, he had experienced the troubles of the world. He knew what his disciples were going to face even while he's away. Because things were not going to change because he had gone. And the fact that he had experienced them, he had known how ruthless the world was, he was going to leave them in the same world. You remember elsewhere, I think, um, still in the Gospel of John, I think uh, 1633, when he told them, in this world there are so many troubles, but take heart, I have overcome. Beloved, it has not changed even today. As it was with the times of the disciples then, it is still today, and Jesus is still encouraging us with the same words. And he's saying that in this world, there are many troubles, but take heart, I have overcome. There is totally nothing right now, my brother and my sister, that you're going through that God is not aware of. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So friends, because Jesus had experienced these troubles and he knew what his disciples would go through, he promised them, as much as I'm going away, I am not leaving you as an orphan. I mean, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I am going away, but I'm going to ask my father to send you a helper. Verse 26. Let me pick it from verse 25. We are in the same chapter 14. 
These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Praise the Lord. Friends, Jesus promised to send, to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. And that is very clear in verse 16 when he said that, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The Jesus leaving his disciples, it looked like the world had come to an end. You actually know what happened when he was arrested and he was um, uh, uh, heading for crucifixion. All the disciples disappeared and got lost, completely got lost and disappeared from the surface. It seemed to them the world has lost, had come to an end. No wonder Peter quickly forgets after the burial, the death and burial of Jesus Christ. And he turns back to his old way of life. He goes uh, fishing and encourages his friends and they also join him and they go fishing. And thank God there Jesus finds them and he finds them back too. And he restores, reinstates Peter, bringing him back to, to the call. So friends, Jesus was not going to leave the disciples as orphans. He was not going to leave them helpless, but he promised. He promised a helper. Now hear the word, uh, beloved, today we are, um, we are, we are, as we are looking at the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does many things. And among them, he is an advocate. He is an advocate. Now hear the word he used signifies as an advocate in first john verse chapter 2 verse 1 signifies uh, it, it implies a, a patron one who pleads one who defends the cause of the other before kings and princes so an advocate is the one is one who stands in a place to defend you stands for you and you remember the disciples had been told, Jesus had told his disciples, when you are taken in courts of law, do not worry about what to say. The Holy Spirit will give you what to say. Hallelujah. He was going to act as their advocate. Now, friends, it is joy. It's my joy to let us know that we too today, we have an advocate who is the, the Holy Spirit himself. He is, he is our helper. He pleads our cases. He's always present with us. He does not leave us because Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit. Remember, Emmanuel, God is with us. So friends, Jesus is not going to leave you alone or abandon us as orphans. The Holy Spirit whom he promised is with us as an advocate. As other translations call him a comforter, a helper. And, and a helper, and this word in Greek means someone who is called to one's aid. And so we can see this is the helper, an advocate, an aid who is able, who is always there to help you. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is always there to help you. Now, this morning, I, I have had an experience with the Holy Spirit. He is my friend. I have experienced him in my life. This morning, yesterday, I misplaced my keys. Very interesting. I went to office. From office, I came to the vestry. Thereafter, I don't know why I left the keys. So, all the time, I looked around, going to different offices, asking who has seen my keys. There was no one had seen them. So I went home. This morning, I came in rain. I had nowhere to, you know, hide myself. Everyone was, today being Monday, most offices are closed. So I had nowhere to be. But nevertheless, I found myself where to just hide myself. But as I was there, and I just said, but Holy Spirit... You are the one who, who knows all things. You know the mind of God. You know everything. Can you reveal to me where these keys are? Beloved, in less than one hour, I had received my keys. 
Praise the Lord. Now imagine the whole of yesterday was running up and down, up and around, you know, using my own strength and worrying where have I put my keys. And yet it was very simple, engaging the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you are the one who knows all things. Please reveal to me where they are. And there um, I was able to find them. So friends, Jesus promised to send someone who will help us along the path. Uh, remember, I have already mentioned, he knew this path was not going to be easy because he had warned that the disciples had told them it was not going to be easy. And, and we know very well that actually all, all the disciples except for John, all of them were killed in a cruel manner. So it wasn't going to be easy for them because they were in this world, which was not their own, promoting the kingdom of heaven. And so the same that had killed Jesus, they were going to persecute them. Now Jesus needed to remind them, you will have a helper, someone who will help you and carry you through, who will be with you in whatever situation you are facing. And it's not any different from us, beloved. We all need a helper. Each one of us needs a helper. Whether you cannot say that you have it all. I have had, you know, I, I, I want to call, to use the, the word that the, the writer of Proverbs uses, the foolish, the foolish people of this world think that I have attained it all. There is no need for God. That is foolishness. Because even when they think they have attained it all, what have you attained? How much can you pay for the breath that you breathe? Friends, every human being needs a helper and more so the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who is meant for us believers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. However, for you to have the Holy Spirit as your friend, you must live a sinless life. You just cannot compromise and play around with the sin and say, you know, I'm going to play about this and you now play my tricks and cheat and do this and that and you think you'll be able to invoke the Holy Spirit to work for you. He will not because he is holy. Remember the Holy Spirit himself is God. He's a third person of the Trinity. He existed at the beginning of creation. He was there. He knows the end from the start. He is the spirit of truth. You cannot tell a lie and think that you can keep him around. Unfortunately, this is very common with church people. Um, I don't know what to call them, believers or Christians. Because a Christian is it truly the one who is in the likeness of Jesus Christ. But we have so many people that one leg is in church on Sunday. Another leg is elsewhere during the course of the week, doing a lot of cheating and telling lies and stealing and doing all sorts of things. But on Sunday, we lift up those holy hands, oh Lord, and you say, God, intervene in this and this and that. Beloved, you cannot mock God. You cannot mock God. Again, the Bible tells us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes, you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and he dwells inside on, of you. But you grieve him when you live in sin. So again, P Peter, as he mentioned in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, repent and turn away from your sins. For the Holy Spirit to be able to work for you, you must live in repentance. You just cannot, you just cannot play about that. And you think that you'll play around things and you'll not move forward. You just have to live in repentance, confessing your sins and recognizing that you have sinned against God and seeking for forgiveness. There, beloved, you'll be in friendship with the Holy Spirit. You'll be in friendship and he'll be able to reveal to you and, and things that you do not know, as he says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call unto me, I will reveal to you the things that you do not know, the hidden secrets of life are known by God himself. But when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you can be very sure you live in darkness and you'll not be able to get your answers. Um... Yes, 
uh, the Holy Spirit is always in your circumstances. Praise the Lord. When you are crying, he is right there with you. And the Holy Spirit, because he knows every little detail, he will give you the strength to go through that situation that seemed to be a mountain before you. So what am I trying to say? Trust the Holy Spirit and be sure that he will carry you through that difficult situation. You are confused. You are helpless. You have nowhere to turn it to. Remember, you have a friend who is by your side. Remember, he cannot leave you alone. Why? Because Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit will come and live on the inside of you. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He will always be right there with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He can never leave you, no matter what happens. If you think he's lying, think about Jesus Christ. You may say that he was a son of God, but what happened? At baptism, you want to think a son of God? The Holy Spirit has come, the Holy Spirit has come upon him. All things are going to be sailing through. No way. Even when he was a son of God, at baptism, receiving the Holy Spirit, confirming that this is surely my son, the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. Who wants to do that? So friends, when you find yourself in a situation, in a difficult circumstance, don't grumble and think that God has forgotten you. He is still with you. He knows you. All he desires is that you will trust him, believe him, and surrender fully. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Jesus told his disciples, that the Holy Spirit will teach them all things. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He is a teacher. Think about these men who were fishermen, who knew nothing. Among them, I love Peter. I love Peter's character. Because many times I see myself in Peter. Peter, talkative as he was, I mean, uh, how he was quick to answer and well, he was quick to promise. He was there assuring Jesus, I am going to die with you. If it means to die with you, I'll die with you. But man, wait a minute. After Jesus' resurrection, I rather crucifixion, when he was arrested, going to be, Jesus, Peter was the first to take off. Quickly, he took off, disappeared. He was nowhere to be seen. And before we knew it, he was busy back into fishing. Now, this is the money that was coming from the business he had abandoned. Now he's going back to the same business. But by the grace of God, because God had called these disciples, Jesus had walked with them. He had taught them. The only difference was that they had not received the Holy Spirit to help them. And so when Jesus reinstates Peter after his resurrection and he comes, he tells them, do not leave Jerusalem. Stay in this place. Keep in this place until the Holy Spirit does what? Until the Holy Spirit comes. Now, Peter, timid as he was, he preaches the sermon that drew over 3,000 people to the Lord. You want to ask, where did he get that boldness? Where did he get what to teach? Where did he get the wisdom? The Holy Spirit taught him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's able to teach you the things that you do not know. You don't have to depend on your papers. You don't, you don't have to depend on your books. You don't have to depend on your wisdom. When you find yourself stuck and you don't know what to do, call on him. And ask him, Holy Spirit, how do I go about this? But also he's a reminder. I've already shared the experience I have had this morning. That he just reminds us of the things that we have forgotten. We are human beings bound to forget just as the disciples were. But the Holy Spirit's work is there to remind us of all things. But when I think about it, thank God today we have the scriptures written for us. But what about the disciples who didn't have anything written? The Holy Spirit reminded them every little detail that Jesus had spoken to them. 
Because the Gospels say everything that they saw, heard, and learned from the Savior, from the Messiah, whom they lived with for three years. So who helped them to remind them the things they learned for three years? The Holy Spirit reminded them. God himself breathed the Spirit in them that they were, be, they were able to remember all these things. And like John mentioned some elsewhere, and he says that most of the things, if they were to be written in the Bible, actually the world will not be enough to accommodate what Jesus said and what he did. So the Holy Spirit did all that work to remind them all that they had learned from the Savior. So, um, these men were dependent on the Holy Spirit. They could not do anything in their own strength. That's why they had to obey and remained in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came. Friends, the Holy Spirit demands obedience. The Holy Spirit might lead you to go in a direction that is not pleasant for you and actually doesn't make sense. And every other person will tell you, you cannot do it that way. No one does it that way and succeeds. And the Holy Spirit says, that is the way to go. So it demands that you live in obedience. You could be in some marriage. And I, 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 I just don't understand this. You find so many people who are in marriages that are really not their marriages. Someone is a second woman in a marriage. And he's praying. <laughs> oh, God, have mercy upon the prayers that people make to God. He's praying that God keeps this man. But in, from the beginning, this man belongs to another woman who is a covenanted wife. And then someone thinks that he will just pray, play around with God because of the promises. These promises are meant for the children of God living in obedience. God tells us, do not give your children, your sons and daughters to the foreigners. And lo and behold, one wakes up and says, me, I'm going, my, my daughter is marrying her son's son. And you see, who knows, it is God's will. Is it in the scripture? Is it what the word says? The spirit of God is the truth. He cannot contradict himself. He can't contradict what is written in the word of God. So friends, for the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and be able to be there for us, reminding us, helping us, and working in us, we must live in obedience with the Spirit of God. We must be in obedience with the word of God. Failure to do that, you'll close out the Holy Spirit and you live your own empty life. And remember, the life, the, the life led by the, the, the Spirit of God is eternal life. And remove the Spirit of God, any life led by the flesh is death. So will you yield to the Lord and let him who promised never to leave you, never to abandon you, will you yield to him, obey him, and live in accordance to his will. He desires that we all come to him and live and not die. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage someone this morning. You are living in a notorious sin and you're wondering how you can be able to have the Holy Spirit in your life. All you need is to confess, repent, and turn away from your wicked ways. Return to the Lord. He will forgive you and he will be able to impact you and, and fill you with the Holy Spirit. But for my brothers and my sisters who are struggling in one way or the other, remember, he is with you. He promised he will never leave you. Your father and mother will forsake you, but he will never forsake you. And he says, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with you. Praise the Lord. His rod and staff comfort you. So be encouraged that as you walk through this turmoil world, he is with you. Hallelujah. One thing just determined is to live according to his will and be ready to, to do what is pleasant in his sight. You will be very sure he will carry you through no matter the storms of life, no matter the difficulties that you face. He will carry you through and he will bring you success. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Thank you, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, for the advocate, the helper, 
our comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom you left behind to be able to help us. Lord, we do not know how hard it would have been for us to be able even to witness, even to carry the gospel into this world which is fallen. We do not know how we would be able to stand through all these challenges and trials. We have no idea how possible it would have been as for us. But because Jesus, out of love, you asked your Father to send the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our advocate, our helper, and he came, actually he came and he's with us. It is the reason we can stand. It is the reason we can rejoice. It is the reason we can do all things that we do, even when we are weak in our own selves. So Lord, we give you the praise. We give you all the honor and the glory. Praise be it your holy name forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.